Um, so today we're going to work on two more turns. These turns are a little bit different than the traditional pirouette, which for the most part is pretty stationary. Um, these two are traveling turns. So we're going to work on something that I neglected to go over last time, and that is spotting um, before we actually go into the turns themselves. So spotting itself is a technique that pretty much all dancers use uh, to keep yourself balanced as well as not making yourself super dizzy when you turn, um, especially when you're turning for long periods or you're turning and moving for distances. So spotting, the basics about it are you're going to find an object that is eye level, so not too high, not too low, but like directly at your eye level, and you keep your eyes on it as you're turning until the last possible second, and then you snap back. Very basic. So we'll start that. You don't have to do any fancy footwork or anything. Just practicing that kind of motion. So find something in whatever space you're in at that eye level and start to turn over one shoulder. And once you get that very last second, snap it around. And you really want to snap it. You you can't really just go because then it defeats the purpose. You really want to go from here all the way around almost so try that a little bit um, over both shoulders because turning like any other dance move will be easier on one leg than the other. So really just practice that a couple of times. And then as you get more and more comfortable with it, try doing it multiple times. You're going to have to, it's a little bit harder if you're just sort of tiptoeing around like I'm doing right now. It's really something that is easier the quicker that you're doing um, to do multiple times. So give that a shot for about one minute. Um, and then we will move on to the two traveling turns. Um, so both of these turns, uh, I'm just going to talk while you're hopefully practicing your spotting, um, are usually transitional. Um, you can do these in a long phrase, uh, as well as just by themselves over and over and over again. Um, but uh, today I'm going to show you the three traditional ways to get up into them, and then just how to keep them going. Um, so hopefully you feel a little bit cozier with your spotting. Um, okay, just making sure that this is actually filming. Um, so the first turn that we're going to learn is called a chenet. So chenet the basic body position can, is usually in first and you're up like this. Um, you can also go into a chenet that crosses a little bit more, but your feet will always be continually coming through first position in releve. And your arms, um, a way that most people learn chenet is that your arms kind of open and close with each turn, but then over time, you do get to the point where your arms are just out in front of you in fifth. Um, so you want to kind of figure out where your arms are sitting. Um, feel where the end of your sternum is and then come out from there. So it's very similar to the second position of the arms where a teardrop or a raindrop should be able to come down your arm. When it's out front, your shoulder should be above your elbow, should be above your finger. So that's where your arms will be. Um, for the most part, you will come out of this, not come out of this, come into this, uh, with a leg that preps to bring you up. So I tend, when I'm teaching beginning ballet classes, to either start in first or fifth, and then bring this out. It's really hard to push yourself up from a straight leg, um, because then you have to kind of throw your weight over one way to then be able to throw it back over. So it's not really the easiest way to do it, nor is it the correct way to do it. So you're going to want to bend that back leg because this will give you a little bit of a spring up into the turn. So just give it a try. Give it just one turn. See how that feels. And then depending on the space you have, this is where your spotting really comes in handy, is, um, excuse me, you're going to find Depending on where you are in, in space, like right now I'm going to find a different spot to spot. 
um, and try to do this more than once. So, it's a little hard for me. I'm on a rug. This is not ideal to turn on. Um, a few pointers. So, when you are up here, you really, this is one of those times when your, where you're holding your weight does come into play. Um, I mean, that it does with every move, but this is one where you can really see it. Because if you're too far, far forward in your chest, you're not going to be able to stay balanced at all. So you're really going to want to hold this sort of pelvic region in, not sucking it in, but like keeping it tight. And your shoulders are going to be back even though your arms are forward. And your chest is open, but it's not like forward. It's just there's some movability in that chest. So basically, so just kind of practice going up and down and find where it, that, you know, it will be this positioning is the easiest to go up and down in instead of having like your butt out or your chest forward. That's just harder. And it's really hard to stay up that way. So practice the shenay a couple of times. And then straight up and around. Um, also, quick pointer that I forgot to mention earlier, you are coming up onto a straight leg. So this prepping back leg is bent, but it brings you up and then both are straight. So try that a couple times. I'm going to grab some water while you are. And maybe try going slow a couple of times and then really as you're getting more used to the idea of squatting and the idea of having your body turning maybe try a little bit faster um this arm i also will grab some support and stuff since we come back in with our next turn is that this arm is also prepped like this leg and this arm will come out like the leg and that secondary arm one that's out, whips in, and that gives you even more momentum to go in the direction that you're going. Um, with this prep, when you open up, you don't want to open past yourself. You're not, if you're looking at me from this side, I'm not opening up. I'm opening directly to my second, and that should be pointing towards where you're going. So now we're going to move on to another turn that is functionally very similar to the Chene. Um, it's called a Pique turn, but it's almost like a combination of a Chene and a Pirouette because, like the Pirouette, you're coming up into a Paco. Um, yeah. Uh, yeah. Basically, the, but the leg that is prepping is the leg that you're going up on. And the, that original leg that is bent is what's coming up into that pate. Um, it is most traditional to see pate to the front or the side. So that's where you're aiming. Um, a couple tips on that. Let me show you my foot. The front is baby toe to the front of the knee. Side is big toe to the knee. You don't want to sickle your foot, which is sort of like that or like that. You really want your point to be straight through. But other than that, it's pretty much the same to a chene. So you prep and then you come up and around. Unlike a chene, where you can just stay up for multiple turns, a pique, you can't because you you start to lose that momentum as you're coming around. Um, you can do many many piques in a row, but um, you can't really just do, you know, one and then one and then one. You have to come through this position multiple times. Um, in theory, yes, you can do one turn that turns into multiple turns, like when you have a double or a triple pirouette, but that is much different. Um, same ideas of spot. Hello, I apologize, I just got cut off, so there might be a small uh, chop in the video. Um, but luckily I was finishing up anyway. So, what 
we're doing with PKs, I want you to do the same thing that you just did with sittings. I want you to start a little bit slow, kind of just feel what it feels like to come up into that position before you then begin to turn. Um, and if you have enough space, try to do multiple. Try to go one, come down, one. That was a not terribly great version. Um, give me two minutes and see how it feels. Try not to bring it more water. And then, talk to you for a split second. So I'm hoping those turns feel pretty good for you. Uh, same notes for pirouettes and coming into passe that we've talked about in earlier videos all still matter when you're doing PKs. Um, I would love if you guys would give me some feedback on things you'd like to work on. Um, either things you want to bring back or new things you want to try in the upcoming video. That would be super swell. Um, other than that, I hope you guys are learning.